infancy, most of us feel a magical attraction to water. For nine months before we are born, we live in water, like the sea many believe is the origin of all life. The sea many spend their lives trying to get back to. My name is Jacques Maillot. In my youth, my friends and I began freediving in the Mediterranean Sea diving as deep as we could while holding our breath. Freediving is as old as humanity. Our earliest ancestors brought back food and pearls from the shallows. 1,500 years ago, the female Ama divers of Japan began descending with only the air in their lungs to gather shellfish and kelp. They continue with great skill, even today. But our quest had nothing to do with the riches of the sea. We were interested in only one thing, discovering how deep a human being could dive on a single breath of air. Our kind of diving challenge had begun about 1950 as a competition among spear fishermen in Italy. Scientists then believed the man would be crushed to death below 30 meters. By 1965, a rivalry for world records had begun between Enzo Mallorca and myself. For 20 years, we drove each other deeper. In those days, we had no specific rules. We used whatever means possible to descend farther into the sea. We were challenging a totally unknown world. We were lucky to survive. Some of our friends did not. Eventually, using heavy weights, we both passed the seemingly impossible barrier of 100 meters almost 
330 feet. As Enzo Mallorca made a record dive in 1967, a Cuban boy named Pipin Ferreras watched in amazement. I was always drawn to the sea. Even before I could talk, I could swim. In a way, I had been made the child of the sea in a ceremony of magic. I was a sickly baby, so a god of health, Olokun, was invoked to protect me. In the Santeria religion, which was brought to Cuba from Africa, Olokun is also the god of the deep sea. I believe I was destined to someday dive deep into the realm of my guardian angel. While Pipin dreamed of the ocean, on the other side of the world, there was a little Italian boy named Umberto Pellizzari, who hated water. I was afraid of all war. Desperate with my fears, my mother decided to put me in a swimming school. After the first lesson, she couldn't drag me out of the water. By the time I was 18, my friends and I would drive for hours every weekend to get to the sea. There is nothing we love so much as free dive. We were not professional divers, just close friends who love the sea. For me, spearing fish while free diving was the only way to make a living in Cuba. One day, a journalist convinced me to enter a competition, and I broke the world's free diving record. Eventually, the champion Pipin was visited in Cuba by one of his biggest fans, Umberto. Pipin invited the young Italian to dive with him. Soon, like Mallorca and Mayol before them, they were breaking each other's records, using any discipline available. Competition became fierce, and friendship faded. Soon, their rivalry expanded into competing philosophies. Umberto began to reject the sled and concentrate more on a discipline called constant weight, using only his body to dive as deep as possible and return with no artificial help. Pipin remained focused on reaching the ultimate human depth, and he continued in the discipline called no limits, plummeting ever deeper on a weighted sled, then rising with the help of a balloon. Each claimed their discipline was the superior achievement. But who was the better diver? And which discipline the more challenging? Now each prepares for an unprecedented and seemingly impossible record dive. Becoming a world champion free diver was my way out of Cuba. And now I live and train in Miami. For my next record, I would try to dive more than 162 meters, 531 feet, the equivalent of a 50-story building, deeper than any human has gone on a single lung full of air.
my mentor, Jacques Mayol, told me to use pranayama yoga to focus my mind and spirit before a record dive. To go as deep as I hope to go, I know that concentration and meditation will be critical. But I also know that I have to be in the best shape of my life. I train near my home in Sardinia at a magic place called Capo Testa. Here, the rocks and the ocean give me energy, make me feel as though I could dive to the bottom of the deepest sea. For a single three-minute dive, I train 10 months. It's hard work, but I want to reach 80 meters more than 262 feet, using only my legs and fins. No one has ever done that. of my preparation, I leave Miami each day to train in the ocean. I like to dive with sharks. For me, they're not monsters, but companions. They represent self-confidence and power. In my imagination, I become one of them. My first challenge is convincing my body that oxygen is unnecessary. Some of the best competitive free divers can hold their breath for nearly eight minutes. want to be the deepest free diver in the world, your concentration has to be complete. And to think about rivalry is dangerous. I try to think instead about competing with myself.
I choose constant waves because to me it's the purest form of free diving. A diver on a sled has only to hold his breath and equalize his ears. But in constant weight, there's no artificial help. It's just me and the ocean. Every free diver has an intimate relationship with the ocean. The ocean is like a god to the free diver. You talk to the ocean, you pray to the ocean, sometimes uh, you even hate the ocean, but in the end uh, you know you cannot live without the ocean. Sometimes, Kim McCoy, a diving physiology researcher, joins me as I begin to practice deep dives. He wants to learn more about the hidden effects on my body 
when I do a deep, no-limit sled dive. Pepin is helping us understand the body's responses to extreme pressure during a free dive. By attaching sensors, I can monitor the changes in his vital organs as he descends. Pepin has exceptional abilities underwater, which science can't completely explain. We don't really know how much pressure the human body can ultimately withstand. Immediately, Pepin's heart rate begins to slow, which conserves oxygen, a diving reflex we humans share with marine mammals. To prevent his eardrums from bursting, Pepin must force air up the eustachian tubes inside his ears to counteract the increasing pressure outside, which in his record attempt will reach over 235 pounds per square inch. As the water gets colder and the pressure builds, the stresses are immense. Pepin's body goes into survival mode and a blood shift begins. The blood in his arms and legs squeeze into the center of his body to compensate for the reduced size of his compressed lungs. Otherwise, his chest could collapse under the pressure, resulting in certain death. On deep dives, Pepin's heart rate slows to only 14 beats per minute. Below 150 meters, nearly 500 feet, his lungs are compressed to the size of oranges. His heart is pushed to the side and upward by the massive pressures. Ironically, most freediving deaths are the result of shallow water blackout which occurs when a diver stays too long at depth. If he does, the oxygen level in his blood drops too low during ascent, and it's lights out. When I'm finally ready for my record attempt, I can open up to the world again. And then I relax by diving with my wife, Audrey. I grew up scuba diving, but I became a free diver when I met Pepin, so that I could understand him and feel closer to him when he dives. The sea is where we found each other, more than any other place. It is our home. As Pepin prepares for his record dive, McCoy readies the instrument that will verify his depth. Breathing a special mix of gases, my chief safety diver, Pascal Bernabé, will dive to the bottom of the line. He puts himself at great risk, and without him, I couldn't attempt what I hope is the deepest free dive in history. Many of my friends have died free diving, and I accept that my life could end on any dive. Before I enter the water, I ask Olokun to protect me and open the doors of his blue abyss. Strangely, I always feel calm before a dive. I'm more relaxed than Audrey, but in spite of her apprehension, she's there for me. Five minutes before my dive, I send the safety divers down. On scuba, they can remain at depth only a short time to avoid the bends. Now, there is no time for indecision or delay.
530 feet below, Pascal waits alone. In the deep, sometimes I read, sometimes I sing. But mostly I wonder what's happening so far above me. And on this dive, I try not to think about what happened to my friend just two days ago. What he was trying to break the record is attempting today. During his ascent, he blacked out. We were afraid he would never wake up. But today, even though the crowds and cameras are gone, he's back to try again. He refuses to quit. For three minutes, Pipin disappears. I hold the line tightly to feel a connection to him, to imagine in every vibration what he's going through. When Pepin surfaces, we're all elated that he's safe, but we won't know precisely how deep he's gone until I download the data. 162 meters. 531 feet. Pepin Ferreras has gone deeper holding his breath than any man in history. the outside world doesn't exist for me. I'm completely within myself.
When I walk out into the bright sunlight, I'm only vaguely aware of the commotion around me. In my mind, I'm already in the sea. The key to achieving a constant world record is efficiency. During the diet, I have to conserve every molecule of oxygen in my body by being completely streamlined and absolutely calm. Every movement I make, even every thought I have, will use up precious oxygen. As with every dive, my parents and sister are here, always supportive, always worried. My father insists on watching on the water, but he can't swim. We put him in a buoyant wetsuit so he won't drown trying to see my dive. Last minute, they imagine the entire dive ahead. I feel the ocean absorbing my body. I see myself grabbing the tag at 80 meters, 262 feet. I tell myself I can do this. When I'm finally prepared, I've already succeeded in my mind. I've already descended into the blue infinity below. Following the guideline, I can touch only at the bottom. I signal for the final five minute countdown. Now the safety divers descend. These last five minutes seem like five seconds.
After the record, my deepest safety divers spend a long time decompressing. They're my brothers, and they share in the risks. But they can't share in the celebration above. So, I bring the party down to them. Somewhere there are divers who will break the records of Pippin and Umberto, just as they broke the records of Majorca and Mayol. But records are fleeting. In the end, a true diver knows that the essence of free diving is not to challenge others, but to dive deep within himself, and for a few precious moments, to become one with the sea. <laughs> 